I know, I know, you can barely contain your excitement. So let's dive back into the same piece of code, but using Visual Studio Code, Microsoft's code development environment. Now, just to prove that I'm not cheating and not staging anything, let's open Visual Studio Code. Now, this is also the first time I've ever used Visual Studio Code on this machine. I literally added the machine definition, but I haven't looked in the nLitten library. So, okay, let's take this right from scratch. I'm jumping around too fast if you're a complete noob. Now, assuming you've never written RPG before and you know nothing about it, you're familiar with how this green screen looks. I like to use Visual Studio Code. I'm a, a big proponent of Visual Studio Code, recently converted, used to use IBM Rational Developer. Um, and then I made the move into Visual Studio. VS Code is slick. It has all of the connection information for IBM I systems for free. It doesn't cost you a penny. Nothing stopping you right now going off to IBM, downloading VS Code, clicking on plugins, adding code for IBM I. And if you look on my website at nicklitton.com, you'll see uh, some lessons about how to do that. So go search for it, you'll find it. So let me connect to this server. This is my IBM I server. Obviously, you'd have to have your IBM I server on there. Um, okay, I get this warning message. Looks like I haven't set up the debug PTF. Uh, that's, again, because it's a new machine for me. So I'm just going to close that. So let's go and create an object browser, a new filter. And we want to look in the nLitten library, right? So we're going to look into nLitten and say, show me everything that's in my work library. There she blows. Let's open it for the first time. Here's all of the objects in my nLitten library. If I go and look at QRPG LE source, I should see these hello, one, two, three, four, and five. There they are. And some other stuff that's there, by the way. Let's go and open hello five. Here it is in the IDE. Straight away, if I do a side-by-side -side comparison, if I come back to my, let's try and do a little bit of side-by-side -side so you can see it in all its glory, right? If I look at Hello5 in here, this is what we see. Pretty hard to work with. When I look at that same source member, you can see straight away it's a little bit neater for me to play with. I can add some spaces in. I want to change this to be a variable. I could go in and type this directly into SEU, but it would highlight everything as an error message. It wouldn't understand the syntax. I'm going to declare a system variable, dcl-s. You notice that as I'm typing this in, VS Code is telling me prompting up what are you up to Are you trying to create something and i say yep it then tells me when i click on what i'm trying to do right you've got to give it a name you've got to give it a length and add any keywords i'm just going to call it message msg it's a character i'll make it i don't know 50 long um, i haven't got any extra keywords to add this is a very simple um, variable um, and then in our code what we're going to say is we're going to say msg equals hello world and now that we've got that value shoved into a variable we've got to display it out to the screen so let's just say display msg makes sense right even for a complete new programmer we're saying declare a variable give it this name make it this size take the variable put this text into it and then display it on the screen I can compile this, so I was thinking then for a second, I can compile this from within Visual Studio Code, but for ease of use for this example, I'm gonna do everything back through green screen. Let me save this. File, save. And if I jump back in here and do a five next to hello five, because I've just made changes to it in Visual Studio. Oh, there's my new code. Exactly as I created in here, again, the benefits of VS Code as a coding environment become more and more obvious. Just the color coding and the showing what the functions are within the fields, you can see this is much more readable than this, right? But let's compile it anyway and make sure it works. We'll do a 14. It says you're gonna create it and compile it, and we say yes. And if I go to the command entry, 
and I call hello5. Hello world, free format with variable. That works nice and easy. Um, and putting a variable in like this, it's a little bit of a waste of time if it's not a true variable. So perhaps what you want to use is one of those keywords we were talking about earlier on. How about I take this text and I initialize this variable with that text. Then I haven't got to bother about defining it. I'm saying declare a variable, call it message, make it 50 long, here's the field text for it, uh, display it and return. Let's try and run that one, shall we? Again, I'll go in, I'll create hello five. Oops, I did a one keystroke too much then. 14 to compile it, replace it. Let's call it again, shall we? What do we see? Look at that. Display hello world free format with ins variable. Now, of course, there's other ways we can do it. If we knew in this example, if this value MSG was going to be changing, this is how I would code it. I might set it um, with an initial value there because then I could say MSG equals new value for uh, MSG variable. And I could display that. So what I expect to see when I call it, because I'm not making any changes, I would see this in the messages. Chicken lady. Who is the chicken lady? That's my missus, by the way. <laughs> um, and here's the second value. So let's compile this one. I'll save it. And we'll compile it. And again, if I call it, there's my first value being stuck out. And there's my second value being stuck out. If it was a constant, we would declare the exact same thing like this. We'll just do a three to copy and make a hello six. One last thing to do, very simple. Notice that in here I don't see it hello six, so I'll have to click refresh. There's my hello six, I'll open this one. If this value was never changing, perhaps the headering on a, a screen or a company name, I would declare it as a constant. Constants don't have a length. We can just put in uh, this is a constant message. Wait, Nick, what's that yellow warning guff you've got on there? I hear you saying constants must be in uppercase. This is uh, a standard within VS Code, within the Code for IBMI plugin more, more directly, where it's saying, I'm trying to impose a coding standard on you, a best practice that says, if in the code you're defining a field, call anything you like, um, do it as uppercase, and then I know, looking at the code, whenever I see a variable in uppercase, it's a constant. Seems reasonable to me. I can call it anything I like. So I'm going to call it, I know, upper bob. Anything you like. Then I would have to display upper bob here. I don't have to call it. This will still work. This will still compile because uh, RPG isn't case specific for its field names. So it's not an error message. This is just telling, this is just code saying, look, come on, you're not doing this very well. If you're gonna be a coder, write things neatly. It's a standard that I never used to adopt uh, until I started using code. And now I kind of like it. So I do like it, it's very nice. So here's the same thing. I'm declaring a constant called upper bob. I've got, this is a constant, const, const, const. this is a constant message and I'm displaying it. The difference with constants are you cannot change them. So if I try to do a upper bob equals something new, the compile well, I'll show you, the compiler's not gonna like that. So let me save this. When I try and compile, hello six, wah, wah. I could go into the compile listing and show you. 
where it's going to tell me this is wrong or I can just tell you it's wrong. I'll just take it out. Let me save it again. Let me try and compile it again this time. It worked quite happily. So if I call it, this is a constant message. Ta -da! Well, there you have it. That's uh, probably far too long with me waffling about RPG, but that's your simple Hello World guide to writing RPG. Um, we've looked at SEU, we've looked at RPG 3, 400, going into free format, going into modern RPG. Modern RPG like this, um, without getting too bogged down into it, I'm going to start writing some more code examples. The next thing I'll do is I'm going to take some um, old RPG code for a real working program uh, from a physical file with um, a program reading it and doing something. I will convert the physical file to an SQL table. Then we'll take the RPG code, convert that to free format using the wonderful uh, ILE tools within Code for IBMI and um, publish it. <laughs> publish and be damned. I hope you found this useful. If you're a complete noob in RPG, you may have done. Um, if you didn't, please don't abuse me too much. And uh, go and have a nice relaxing cup of tea. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Bye.